Welcome to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart. Both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Die Trying, book number two in Lee Child's Jack Reacher series. You know, if you've been following my channel for a while, I reviewed book one, uh, in the Jack Reacher series not long ago, and now we're to book number two. And I did buy the entire Jack Reacher series. You can see it right there on my shelf. Anyway, let's talk about this book, Die Trying. Did I like it as much as the first Jack Reacher book? Well, it came out in 1998. Um, so a bit of time ago, uh, over 20 years ago, let's talk about the cover first. You know, I love covers, graphic design, cover illustration. We always review the covers before we do anything else. This one is a little bizarre. I mean, all the Jack Reacher novels have sort of the spine right here. That's all matching. I like that, that they made all the spines match. They got this. So, I mean, one of the things is, uh, I like it. I just don't know why they put the Jack Reacher. I get why. I get marketing. I mean, marketing wise, Jack Reacher is almost a bigger name than Lee Child. <laughs> you know what I mean? They might, I mean, so I get why they want to put a Jack Reacher novel. When most novels like this, it's just like small type, you know, uh, Jack Ryan novel or a uh, or a Harry Bosch novel. But this is like Jack Reacher, like he's bigger and badder than all of them. So, you know, you might as well. That's the only quibble I have with this cover, is I don't know if they need Jack Reacher to be that big. It's almost like the book, the Jack Reacher book, was almost written by Jack Reacher. That's the way that kind of comes. Anyway, enough of that bullshit. The book starts out in Chicago, and in Jack Reacher fashion... A major kooinky dink happens right from the get-go. Jack Reacher is, nobody knows he's in town. You know, he's just the drifter. He's the ex-army guy, badass, six foot four, like 260 pounds of just sheer muscle. He's just a badass. Everywhere he goes, he's drifting. He's drifted himself into Chicago. He's walking down the busy Chicago street, streets, and kooinky dink happens where this lady walks out of a dry cleaner right in front of him as soon as they meet they don't even meet as soon as they kind of cross paths they are attacked and taken captive and thrown into the back of a van both of them together handcuffed together oh my lord imagine that just imagine the coincidence because oh the coincidences abound in these books which is fine this is fine they're thrillers it's all right it's all right and uh, Lee Child does a good job of sort of explaining why the coincidence has happened as you go. Because, uh, you know, you read it and you're just like, wait a minute. How, how, what are the odds of that? What are the odds of those two characters just having to just wander into each other willy nilly of all the billions of people on earth? But it happened right there on the streets of Chicago. And the kidnappers got them both just like that. Anyway. The kidnappers are demanding an impossible ransom for the lady that's in the truck with him. Now, I will say, this book bounces from Jack Reacher's perspective to a lot of the other characters' perspectives a lot. I think the book loses its momentum dramatically when Jack Reacher is not on scene. Now, if I recall correctly from my previous readings of the Jack Reacher series... Um, some of the books are told in first person by Jack Reacher, so he's in every single scene. I think those are the stronger books. This one sort of take this one and others sort of take a more omnipresent look at the, the a bird's eye view of all the characters, and so we get different viewpoints. I will say the Jack Reacher character, he's the star of the show. So when 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 we when we're looking at the uh, events happening in the book and he's on scene. Things are just better. I sort of honestly skimmed through some of the other scenes where Jack Reacher just wasn't involved in the plot or action or dialogue. Anyway, turns out that the lady that is 
kidnapped with Jack Reacher. I mean, and they're and they're they're transferred from truck to truck and different things like this, and they're trying to figure out between the two of them why they've both been captured. Uh, Jack Reacher's already figured out that it's not him that the bad guys want; it's the lady, and he just by deducing a few things about the lady and her personality, he's already kind of figured out she's some sort of secret agent of some sort, which she is. And the agency that she works for knows that she's been kidnapped and they are looking for her. Not only are they looking for her, but they mistakenly make the mistake that um, they think Jack Reacher is one of her kidnappers. And the quest begins. The cat and mouse game begins where jack reacher our bigger badder funnier guy i mean every this is the whole point of jack reacher books he is the knight in shining armor the biggest guy in every scene he's in he, he's he's bigger he's more badass he's tougher he can fight better he can shoot better he can run faster jump higher and um even tell better jokes than everybody else in these books that he runs across. And that's why we love him, because we all want to be Jack Reacher. We all want to be that guy that has the quick comeback for every insult or for every stupid person that crosses our path. We want to have, we just want to be Jack Reacher because he never loses. And that's the point of, and Lee Child says, yes, I wanted to create an almost perfect character that just swept through every single scene he's in as a winner just as the guy and that's what happens now does jack reacher does that mean that jack reacher doesn't face a lot of peril yeah he does does that mean that he's there's the, the, the books aren't intense no they're fucking awesome intense these are so intense because lee child puts jack reacher into some tough situations now he always gets himself out with um you know, in glorious, badass fashion, as he does in this book. Um, I will say, I enjoyed book one a lot more than book two. And I know coming up, because I've read about ten of them, I read about ten of these Jack Reacher novels about 15 years ago. And I do know that there were a couple... There were highs and lows in the series. I'll be honest, folks. There were some that I was just... Man, this is dynamite and then there are others that are like this is good but gosh it just doesn't have that th that magic that i thought the other ones had um and i think this falls into the second category where and i think it's partly because jack reacher is only in you know two-thirds of the book because a lot of the book is about the other characters and i quite frankly didn't give a fuck about them but anyway let's give um Lee Childs, book number two, Die Trying in the Jack Reacher series. Let's give it a 7.5 out of 10. I know book one, I went bananas over it. And so let's see how book three turns out, because though I did love this one, and I was like reading it as quickly as the others, there was just a little bit missing, and I think I described what that was. Anyway, there we go. That's my review.